Hey, how's it going there, folks? Welcome back here. It is Earthmaster on this Tuesday night, March 5th, 2024. It's about 11.14 in the p.m. here, California time. Latest activity. Uh, let's check the Earthquake 3D globe, see what's going on here. 2.8 in that clustering of activity out there once again around the uh, Ionian Islands area, the Ionian uh, Sea area, just off the coast of Greece. Uh, looks like they're still swarming pretty nicely out there. So uh, let's check that out here on the, we'll have to go over to the EMS, EMSC model just to see uh, the earthquake activity. Double check this, make sure I got the uh, latest information here. Uh, now this area around the uh, Ionian Sea has definitely been seeing a, a swarm of earthquake activity and that is continuing up to this hour. Uh, here's the last 24 hours. This has been going on for about three days now. So as we key in uh, the uh, multitude of quakes here over the last few days, that amplifies and it's still in the same spot. It really hasn't migrated elsewhere. Uh, so I'm not for sure exactly what we're looking at here in terms of uh, larger potential, but it does look like it's building up to something out there in that region. So we'll continue to watch that and uh, report back on any changes that takes place out there. But for now, just a decent amount of earthquake swarming. Uh, here across the South Pacific Ocean, we did see a 6.1 coming in earlier this afternoon here uh, to the Macquarie Island region. This makes the uh, number two six-pointer here in the last couple days around this area. Uh, of course, it did have a 6.7 back on the third and, uh, you know, a more recently today's earthquake. So I still put New Zealand out here right in the middle of that hazard zone, potentially getting a lot of back and forth earthquake activity here north and south of, the, of New Zealand. Uh, so something to watch pretty closely. Seen some deeper movement quakes up here once again. Uh, far as New Zealand goes, let's check out the Earthquake 3D globe and see what we got. Uh, there's a pretty deep earthquake right here into the Kermadec Trench. I believe that's going to be this uh, 3.5. 400, almost 400 kilometers deep here. Uh, it does look like it's on the southern end here of the Kermadec Trench. So we'll continue to watch that. A uh, little earthquake activity off the coast here of Australia with a 3.2 coming in to the Earthquake 3D globe. As uh, far as the west coast goes, let's go ahead and key in, see what's going on up here. Not a whole lot uh, for the Pacific Northwest. Um, Yellowstone did have some activity this morning, but let me double check that today and see how it's looking on the graph. A um, handful of smaller quakes there. Doesn't look like too much activity stirring up. A handful, again... Very small microquakes out there, nothing of concern, really of nothing of interest at the moment there across Yellowstone. Uh, Northern California did see a 3.4 off the Northern California coast, uh, right about the triple point junction here, the Mendocino triple point junction, uh, about 23 kilometers deep for that earthquake uh, for a 3.4 coming in earlier this evening. Now, got a little bit of tremor coming in here to the southern edge of the uh, Cascadia subduction zone, about 99 epicenters of tremor. Not that big of a deal. Uh, in fact, our last major tremor event uh, in terms of the multitude of numbers was back in uh, October 2022 when we had a, a decent amount of tremor going on. Uh, so since then, it's just been a little up and down, but not a whole lot of uh, tremor counts on these uh, on these elevated days. So we'll continue to watch that with this elevated movement down here in terms of trimmer. Definitely watch areas upstream here across Cascadia. Uh, that trimmer activity adding further stress and strain for the next big earthquake out there in the, in the uh, Cascadia. Uh, outside of Reno, Nevada, a handful of smaller earthquakes. This area has seen some swarming here, and I think it's been within the last 30 days as well. There's been a couple different swarms here going on. Uh, really no main quake. There's just uh, a handful of smaller quakes out here uh, in the area uh, near Steamboat. Now, I'm not for sure what specifically is out here in this mountainous area. Uh, it's away from the communities, but up here in the mountains, well, underneath this area, about looks like maybe eight to nine kilometers deep there. Um, some type of, almost looks like some type of mining operation out here. Uh, but I'm not for sure sure if that uh, earthquake activity is associated with it. Either way, a little bit of swarming going on there in the Reno area. Uh, Northern California, aside from the movement up here, looks fairly quiet. One little earthquake this morning outside the San Francisco Zoo, 2.0. And for the rest of California here, got uh, another earthquake in my watch area. I chatted about this this morning, saying that I get a little nervous when I see earthquake activity out here now. 
That's not a big one, not a big swarm, uh, a little 0.7, but earlier this morning we did have a 2.1 as well, and that's just on the north side, or on the uh, uh, eastern side here of the plate boundary uh, of the San Andreas Fault. And this is kind of where the steam and the stress and the pressure builds up here along the uh, plate boundary, and of course at San Andreas Fault. Uh, you know, we could always say it's long overdue, but, uh, you know, I, I was hearing that 20, 20 years ago or so. You can still look at uh, videos and, you know, San Andreas Fault well overdue and uh, a lot of time has passed here. So eventually that won't be the case. So we'll, we'll definitely uh, see that kick up. 3.8, uh, this earthquake coming in late last night outside of the Big Spring, Big Spring, Texas area. Aside from that, oil fields look like they're getting hit out there right now. Um, the rest of the states got one little earthquake in the New Madrid seismic zone, 2.4 coming in here. That is, uh, of course, a major hazardous area around a major populated region there. Had some big earthquakes there back in the early 1800s. A lot of time has passed there as well since we've seen any uh, large movement. But uh, these little earthquakes out here just give us a reminder, a friendly reminder, that, uh, you know, this thing is still building up. Uh, some potential for, for uh, a large earthquake out there, eventually. Uh, Puerto Rico area, a handful of smaller quakes. Really not seeing anything major going on down here across the area. Uh, let's check out the South America region. handful of quakes, really nothing major. Um, see what else we got. Western Pacific has gone awfully quiet here, aside from uh, this little clustering area south of the Philippines mainly. Uh, a lot of older movement here, though. So those rings indicating... Uh, you know, kind of a reddish color indicating some older movement. So it looks like maybe we're still looking at uh, potential back here across this plate boundary. Got to keep an eye on that. Things are, uh, are definitely looking quite active out here. And New Zealand really hasn't had that much adjustment. They've had deep adjustment uh, underneath the North Island area, but really no uh, surface adjustment going on here across the plate boundary. I still think with all this activity um, up north and south here of New Zealand that we're going to see something uh, kick up here. Uh, across the uh, Hawaii area, doesn't look like much is going on out here. In fact, uh, only a handful of earthquakes. The USGS has decided to switch from daily updates on the Kilauea Volcano to weekly updates because of the lack of activity there. So there's not a whole lot going on uh, in terms of earthquake activity. Um, the tilt meters out here, just kind of showing, you know, a little bit of minimal tilt. But aside from that, there's really not a whole lot going on there across the Hawaii area. Iceland region, uh, got about 15 earthquakes here in the last 12 hours, not a whole bunch. Um, you know, there's still likelihood of seeing some eruptive activity out here outside the Grindavik region northeastward, but right now I don't see it. Uh, we're not seeing any elevated earthquake activity out there. Things are, uh, you know, fairly calm across the divergent zones aside from this one little lonesome earthquake early this morning, uh, just after midnight, well, one o'clock my time here for that 4.8. So we'll continue to watch that. Um, you know, I, I do think it's likely that we will see stuff pop here, uh, but it needs uh, a little bit more further divergent activity before we uh, get some further magma influx. Alaska, not a whole lot going on up here. Very typical movement up across the area. And aside from that, uh, you know, what else we got here? Same thing as the last couple updates. Continual activity here across the uh, um, Mediterranean region. That's... Uh, Again, I don't know what it's leading to, but it's definitely uh, got a multitude of quakes stirred up in there. Um, so I guess we'll find out here soon. I mean, a lot of times these swarms can come and go without any main quake. Uh, but we'll just have to watch it and see how it plays out. Space weather activity out here. Well, I wish I could say that things are getting active and on the uptick again, but they're really not. There's a beautiful prominence lifted off there on the eastern limb of the sun, not earth directed. Uh, we are left with uh, pretty much a mess of sunspots here. I mean, yeah, there's a few sunspots, but they're not all that complex. And I really don't see any complexity growing in them at all. You know, I, I don't see how anyone could see uh, anything with these sunspots at all. I've been looking at these things for many years. There's just not a whole lot of hope or potential. But if you were to twist my arm and tell me to pick one, I would probably pick this area right here to watch. There's a little bit, just a little bit of complexity here within that core. Uh, and that's going to be 3599. Uh, and that is the one that harbors a beta gamma. 
glass structure there. Uh, but again, not really counting on anything big. 80% chance for a C flare, maybe. M flare at 20, X flare around 1% chance or so. Not a whole lot in terms of Aurora, so that's just, uh, that's just it. During that unexpected event here, uh, a couple days ago, during that G2 class storm, some beautiful auroras being pictured up there. In the uh, Calgary area, Alberta uh, region, I guess we're flying up there around 35,000 feet or so. That's a beautiful image here from Matt, it looks like. Um, yeah, eventually, hopefully, I'll be able to see some of that. I've never seen it in my life. I would definitely love to check it out, uh, but I'll probably have to go north to see that. All right, uh, severe weather, not a whole lot, uh, at least continuing overnight. Now, possibly here on, uh, this is the day two outlook valid for Thursday. So on Thursday, there's a slight risk out here across central Texas, and that includes a 2% chance for tornadoes, but I think I know what's out here. Hail, a lot of it. <laughs> Texas is known for its large hail, and it's getting that time of year where they can uh, get some big ones out there. 15% chance there of seeing uh, some decent sized hail. Looks to be the main threat, but can't rule out that 2% zone there for tornado probability. Stretching uh, from Abilene up into portions of western Oklahoma as well. Now this area dealing with some wildfires. I'm not for sure if they got the fires out, but uh, you know, I'm sure some rain would be welcome there across the area. Uh, as far as the long-term models go out here, there's a little system churning off the California coast. That's going to bring Southern California some rainfall. Not a whole lot up here in Northern California. It looks like maybe our next decent chance of storm uh, is diminishing. But maybe early next week on Monday. These are colder systems that are coming down. And uh, the models are hinting at uh, a high pressure building out here off the West Coast. Bringing some warmer temperatures out here. A dip in the jet stream here bringing colder temperatures across the Midwest. So just when you thought uh, winter was gone, it looks like it may come back here a little bit. Uh, as we head into the middle of March, maybe even bringing a little bit of snow with it. Uh, so we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. That's a ways out there. Again, just uh, looking at some of these models and seeing what they have to offer. Uh, let's see what else. Is there anything else really going on? I don't think so. Hope everyone has a good night. Um, you know, Mount St. Helens. Let me double check that again here. I was looking at these graphs here this morning and... Um, Let's see what we got here. They're showing quite a bit of little small earthquake activity, and that kind of looks like earthquake activity here. I'm not for sure why the USGS is not reporting uh, all of this. Uh, they did report yeah, a handful of earthquakes here recently um, around the Mount St. Helens area. It looks like a couple, three, well, okay, maybe two directly up here at the summit region. But yeah, they're, they're really not reporting a whole bunch. Point one. Um, Oh, where'd it go? Where'd I, where, what'd I do with it? I got so many windows open. Here we go. Um, but I think there's a little bit more earthquake activity there than just one earthquake. And that's, unless these are ice quakes, it's possible they could be. Uh, some of these earthquakes, though, were showing up on a distant seismograph station here. I can't really say distant, but a little bit more away from the center area. And you can see some of those. So it's possible those other uh, marks there on the graph are um, uh, ice quakes. They just build up there on the instruments and it kind of picks up a, uh, a certain um, signal there from the ice and it sh kind of shows like an earthquake reading, but it's really not. So we'll check back on that. There's not a whole lot of uh, changes there across the uh, uh, volcano in terms of sulfur dioxide, all the typical stuff runs running with, uh, um, you know, volcano eruptions. So. And uh, I don't think we're really seeing anything major going on out here in terms of uh, or CO2, SO2, this up here. I'm not really 100% certain where this is all coming from. It could be coming off of uh, anywhere. But it looks like there's a bunch of SO2 floating around in the air out there getting churned up here by that low pressure system. Um Yeah, NO2, NO2, goodness, some good quality air, right? <laughs> Not really. But, uh, there's a Pacific. 
not looking uh, too active yet. I'm hoping this will change. I don't know if I'm really quite ready for uh, summer to come in yet. Maybe some warmer spring temperatures, but uh, California goes from winter to summer literally in one month. So um, hoping this will change out here a little bit. We'll get a little bit more active uh, activity. Although that jet stream, if you look at the jet stream here on the regions, we've got to go out to the... Uh, uh, Pacific right here and from here we can see the upper air dynamics on the chart uh, getting that split flow here the subtropical jet uh, has been providing a lot of rain down here across the southeast and southern California that's gonna you know I wish I could say it's gonna come back together but uh, yeah it looks a little sloppy as we head into the um, middle of May but hopefully you know, hopefully some of these cutoff lows here will bring us some further rain. We'll have to keep an eye on that. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Have yourself a good day. Seismograph stations right now look pretty quiet, except for Hot Caves, Hawaii. A little earthquake just came in right now. That uh, is a 2.4 earthquake coming in. USGS just picking up on that. So let's see, uh, 2.4 down here uh, underneath the Pahala area, kind of off, off the coast, though. All right, folks, have a good day. Catch you guys back here tomorrow for the Wednesday. Take care.